do probably jump in. Okay. Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'll be showing you this donor car. This is definitely not going to be restored. This is an LS400. It's got a 1UZ V8, which is somewhere around 250 horsepower. And it's quite a light engine compared to the other V8s. And it's known to be one of the most reliable V8s you can get. So what we'll be doing is we'll be pulling out this engine. I actually attempted to take it out from here and maybe park it somewhere over there or maybe over here so I could get under the car and pull out the engine easily. But that didn't work out because basically it's completely jammed up. We barely have tires and uh, we've got a mountain of mud here. The towing guys basically dropped it right here and that's all I can do now. So I can just, basically I'm gonna just lift it up, get under the car, disconnect everything I can and uh, pull out the engine, probably call the scrap guys too. So the plan is use the engine, the automatic gearbox, don't worry about figuring out a manual because we don't have too many options in India that can take this amount of torque. This is about 250 horsepower. Uh, not too bad, but a very reliable engine. So I've been going through the wiring and stuff like that. Basically, all you need to run this car is apparently 12 wires. But as you can see, a rat has met these wires as well. So I'm gonna have to pull out all the wires. I'll do that first. And um, basically I'll have to repair the wiring harness myself and probably simplify it. So there are some guides to simplifying the wiring. That's a great part about these type of cars that people use them as donors so often that you can easily find out how to make this work in another car. So the plan is pull out the wiring, pull out the engine, gearbox, and whatever else I can use and get, a, get rid of this damn thing. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this episode. Here's the LS now. I managed to take out the radiator yesterday the problem was that it started to rain, so I had no choice but to stop. And uh, I wasn't able to move the car out, as you guys can see. So I'll have to work here. Okay. <coughs> Basically, I'm gonna have to disconnect the wiring completely first, label every wire and uh, know the location. So I'll be like, okay, this is uh, MAF or whatever. And, uh, just tape up a piece of tape, write whatever's there. That's how I plan to go about this. The wiring's way too bad to start this in the car. So I'm gonna have to do this. Uh, then after that, I'm gonna disconnect the engine completely, all the coolant hoses, heater hoses, cables, everything has to be disconnected and pull out the engine and gearbox together. I started off with pulling out the wires for the engine. So this is the engine wiring harness freed it up wherever I could. So this was the fuse box. I'll probably have to make a new fuse box for this. And that's the plan over here. I've got this free. Maybe when I disconnect the engine, I'll see some other stuff that I've missed. Oh look, something else. That looks like the heater line or something like that. But yeah, there is always something else that you forget to disconnect. The inside has to be ripped apart too. I think all that I'll keep for the, from this car are the wheels because they could be some something. I don't know what, maybe somebody will buy them. I'll have to pull out the dash and uh, get the steering wheel off and remove the rest of the wiring. So I got the ECU off, I got that stuff off. And I found a really cool guide for the 1UZ swap. Basically all you need to do, yeah, that doesn't close anymore. All you need to do is you need to connect 12 wires, they say, that's all you need. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. And probably there is another control module for the gearbox because there is some sort of, it's not so simple. If you notice here, you've got power, you've got something else, you've got normal, you've got this thing going on over here. So I'm sure there is more control to the gearbox as well. So what I'm gonna have to do is pull out the wiring, make sure everything comes out all right. And uh, that is the plan over here. So that's next. We're back here in the LS400. And uh, I managed to pull out the AC components. They were really tough to get to. There was a bolt over here that I didn't see, one over here. There was a nut over here. I think there was one here too. And something here, something here, some that I just couldn't see and that's why it took me so long. I had to smash everything up, it took a while. 
So now all I've got to do is I've got to take out all the wiring just to be safe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the wiring from here, from there. I've got the engine wiring out from this hole for the ECU. There is something that went to the ECU that went to the other side of the car. That's over here. So I'm guessing I'm going to have to pull out more. So that's what I'm going to do next. Pull out all the wiring and make sure that it is safe. Well, now that I've gotten most of the wiring out, I realize that some of it is stuck because it goes through the fender and goes for stuff like the headlights and the other stuff like that, you know, horn, other things. So that all goes over here. It goes on the other side as well. I can't do the wiring anymore. So I remove the gear shifter. Now the gear shifter is free. The gearbox should be free to move. And I'll have to go under the car, disconnect the gearbox disconnect the uh the engine and pull it out using the engine crane So I finally got the V8 out. This is the one UZ Toyota. This is a very early engine. So what happens with this is because it's an early one, it doesn't have variable valve timing. It's a simple engine. It also doesn't have, it has these really thick uh, connecting rods. So because it has thick connecting rods, it's possible for us to possibly uh, super or turbocharge it. But I don't think we're going to do that. We're going to keep it simple. And it is massive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some ready-made engine mounts. That's going to make my job a lot easier. I'm going to use some E36 rubber mounts. That's going to pair this to the E30. I'm going to get a full service kit for this. So I'm going to get every single sensor, uh, whatever rubber parts I can, a gasket kit. I'm not going to open up the head as in separate the head from the block. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change all the seals I can. I'm going to change the coils, the you know, basically everything I can to make this a fresh looking engine. So next up, I'm going to be cleaning this. So here we are back with the engine and it has taken a bit of effort to get it out. The engine was stuck inside. It's really heavy. It's really large. I had to tip it this way, pull out the engine, get it out. It took some time to get this thing out. So we're looking at somewhere around 250 horsepower. It's not bad. I think what happened is when the um, when Toyota developed this, they had restrictive uh, airflow. So that is one problem with this. That's why people go for super or turbocharging. But, you know, we'll keep this reliable. Probably not do that at all. Um, so now I have to check this engine out. It has been uh, sitting in a car for, I think it looks like about seven, eight years that it hasn't been used. It hasn't been started. So we have some parts that are missing, like a TPS, throttle position sensor. Gonna have to order everything. It'll probably take a month to reach because we're trying to make it, um, what would you say? We're trying to make it easier on us and a bit budget friendly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the, somebody to hand carry the parts. It's a you know a couple thousand dollars of parts just to make this brand new and that's how you should do it you should do stuff like preventive maintenance what we're going to do is we're going to take off all the covers i'm going to strip this apart to the level where i'm comfortable i don't do internal engine work i change ancillaries that's all i do because that's what i'm comfortable with but if it comes to internal engine work taking off the heads or something i'm going to get a pro to do it so i have a friend who is really good with these type of things and he's going to handle that but if that's the case um well, we have a little bit of a problem. I'll show you guys that in the next video and we'll see if we can resolve it. So if we, if we can resolve it, I don't have to open up the engine, but something is a bit amiss and we're going to check that out next time. So till then, I'm going to clean it up a bit more, strip it down to, um, to wherever I'm comfortable and start fixing stuff. Like I'd love to get and change the timing belt and the tensioner. Uh, the water pump is driven by the timing belt, so I'm going to have to remove all that. The alternate, uh, sorry, the starter is right over here. So that will be a challenge to get to. So I'm going to have to get to that. And uh, looks like we have the exhaust manifolds. 
we're gonna have to build up from there or we'll have to modify the exhaust manifolds to mount this. Uh, for the mounting, luckily there are mounting arms available for the E36 and the E30. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those arms, uh, use a combination of parts, and this should be relatively bolt on. I'm also have, gonna have to go through this snake of wires and sort it out. And I'm gonna actually attempt to do this myself, try to fix the wiring and start this engine up. So from what I've read, there's a lot of information on the 1UZ and it is relatively easy um, to get this type of information for swaps that are common. But what we'll do is, I've labeled everything as I went. It looks a little dirty and hopefully, I mean, I'm sure I can read this, but I labeled everything I, that I could. I took out whatever wiring I could and uh, whatever's gonna not be needed according to these guides and stuff, I'll have to cut out and I'll have to go through it. It's gonna take me a bit of time. But what they say is it's easy to get the engine running and started, but it's not easy to get it running well. So that is the challenge. So next up, we're gonna be doing that. So I hope you like this video and I'll be doing a few more of these and working on this car, working on the other E30, which is somewhere over there. And also we'll be working on something else, which is this 124 and building something a little interesting, something that I'm uh, comfortable with. But yeah, I hope you like what's coming up. So stay tuned and uh, like, share, subscribe, and let me know what you guys think about the video. Thank you for watching.